Well, it, it brings back great memories. I mean, my, my whole baseball career really is centered around, um, you know, what happened here with the Yankees. And, you know, I know I played for 16, 17 years, and there was some special times individually, uh, personally, I mean. But, you know, when you do something as a team and, and have them play as a team for the period of time, that they did was amazing. And, and when you see them, these memories come back. It, it's, uh, you know, it's just like rejoining a family again. Neftali in the center. What does make it 1998 team so special? And what does make it different in all the other years around? Anybody want to jump on it? I, well, the, the 98 team, yeah. It's funny, during my career, I, on my birthday, July 18th, we never won, and I never hit or anything like that. It was always bad luck. I remember saying to somebody, I said, we even won on my birthday. This must be a special year. And somebody said, and he said back to me, you won on everybody's birthday. Uh, and that was pretty true. I mean, the, the 98 team was just, they were relentless. You know, whether it was the hangover from... Uh, from 97 that they really had a bad taste in their mouth I know it was talked about a lot and uh, you know the, the I know Susan talked about the plane ride back uh, you know to New York from Cleveland and uh, you know Mariano and Mel and I talked on the tarmac when we got back because he had given up the home run and all that stuff but uh, that was really a low point and <coughs> But the 98 team was, they were just relentless. Uh, you know, we had a big lead, but it had nothing to do with uh, our preparation and our, you know, uh, going out there and, and playing the game as hard as we could. It, you know, I don't think you can go through life by yourself, you know, much less try to go out there and win a ball game by yourself. But these guys really pull together and pull for each other, which, you know, I found, uh, you know, just terrific to to watch and be a part of. Ed, do you have a question right here in the front? Brian. Uh, Old Timers Day, the game was always such a big part of it. Any party you guys wish you could get out there and play today? Nope. <laughs> you want to think I, about that? Yeah, no. I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a bad shoulder. I can't even, like, <laughs> throw the ball to you. Uh, there's no way I could squat down again. Um, I, I'm kidding, but I, I could. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I could hit the ball. I mean, I I, I don't want I didn't want to embarrass myself out there. Ed, go ahead. Joe, at what po at what point was there a moment the game where you said to yourself, "I'm watching something I've never seen before." You don't, uh, Eddie. You never let yourself do that, you know, because you know it, it comes and bites you in the rear end. You know, you you just can't stop to admire until it's all said and done. You look you look back on it. I mean, it. You know, we won 114 games, and I want to tell you something. Uh, in a division series against Texas, these guys were tighter than can be, uh, and it was only because, you know, all right, now what do you do? You know, you won 114 games. Now let me. You know, see if if you're that good, and it's it's just a lot of pressure. But these guys played well under pressure, and um, you know whether it be a one-run game or a blowout or whatever, or they got behind in the game, it, it was just amazing. And you know, and then you know, fast forward it's just a couple of years when uh, Seattle wins 116, you know, made it look easy, uh, but you know they got as far as the championship series, and then that was it. So we just felt there was. Uh, you know, pressure to finish the job, basically. And, um, you know, we certainly were able to do that. And, you know, with uh, after after game one, when we fell behind in game one and they seemed like to have a, have their, uh, you know, their way with us, you know, you know, hitting home runs and, and stuff. And after that, it was, uh, you know, it was all us and, and Scott Brocious for sure. Uh, Gary and Pete right here in the front. Derek, I'm not sure how much you've been able to pay attention this year, but just what have you thought of Anthony Volpe's rookie season? I, I haven't seen, um, I haven't sat down and watched a lot of full games, but I've seen a lot of highlights. I mentioned this earlier. I think the thing that probably stands out the most just from talking with different coaches is the fact that 
whether he's had an up and down game or week or month offensively he doesn't take it to the defensive side and I think that's says a lot about his maturity but you know he's going to get better you know it all comes with experience um, but yeah I think he's handled himself it's tough to play here in New York as a young player when the expectation levels are high but uh, from everything I can tell the way he handles himself is what stands out the most. Anthony and a few other young Yankees are on the roster right now. Just what is your advice to them for how to handle this spotlight and playing in this market? Have fun. I mean, what I've told young players even during my career when they come up the same game, there's just more people in the stands. And I think sometimes you get up to this level, you try to do things a little bit differently, but you have to be yourself. Don't try to do something that you're not accustomed to. But uh, you have to enjoy yourself, try to improve each and every day. Bottom line here is you got to win, you know, so that's the thing you should be focused on. Thanks. Pete. Right here, right next to you. Um, I'll ask you first, Derek, since it's your first Old Timers Day, but we'd love to hear from any or all. Just what are some of your favorite memories from Old Timers Day when you guys were in the, the dugout? And um, I guess just were there any players that were really special to meet in your playing career? You know, the thing that stands out about Old Timers Day, because we all would be in the dugout, and you get a chance to pick players' brains. You know, I, I when, like I said out there, the great thing about this organization, they, they really um, treasure their history. And they bring the players back. And, um, you know, we've just always appreciated building relationships with the ex-players. I don't know if there's one particular player I've looked forward to see because we were spoiled. I mean, we'd come in the clubhouse, Yogi would be there, Whitey would be there, Gator would be there, Reggie would be there. Everyone's there, you know. So we build those relationships with the with the former players as well. Anybody else? Yeah, it's, it's like he said, you know, having, you know, having a <coughs> Yogi around and having – you know, most of the guys that come around and having a conversation with, you know, how do you do when you were struggling, stuff like that. You just, it, it, it means a lot that, you know, you can share or, or, or having a conversation with, a, you know, with a great. And, and the Yankees did it, you know, all the time in spring training and did it, you know, also they were, Yogi was always around here uh, all the time. Uh, so it was good to have. Uh, Brendan, right here to the left. Um, two questions. Joe, first, what do you think of uh, some of the heat that Aaron Boone has heard from the fans this year? Obviously, the season hasn't gone the way the Yankees would have liked. Well, I mean, first of all, when you agree to do this job, and I think Derek, you know, uh, referred to it uh, about the expectations here. They're sky high, and it, no getting around it. Uh, you know, you're going to have to deal with it and understand that... Uh, there's always that cloud that's going to hang over when things go badly. Um, and, you know, just from what I get, you know, chatting with Booney and seeing him from time to time, you know, he's handling it really well. I mean, he, he's, he's out there, he's working hard, and that's all you can really do. You know, the, you know you, they've had some, you know, bad breaks, but uh, that's not an excuse when you're a member of the Yankees. You gotta, you're expected to win, and, uh, you know, he... As I say, when he signed up for it, he knew what he was getting into. And um, also, Jorge, understanding it didn't happen this way in 98 because you were on the road when you won the World Series, but as a catcher, what's it like catching that or being on the field for that final out of a World Series, seeing the whole field in front of you, having that perspective? Uh, well, it happened in, 90, in 99. Uh, we were here, obviously, and, and Mo was on the mound. And, but, yeah, it's just uh, you're trying to count down you know how many outs you got left, and uh, where the host coming up, and, and stuff like that. And but just, you just, you know you look around and you try to focus and, and stuff. But when you get that final out, and uh, I mean it's just just completely joy. You know, uh, it's just uh, a lot of fun to you know to be on the field and, and celebrating, especially when you when you do it here at home. John in the middle on the right. For all, for all you guys, there's so many different memories you guys can go back to when you're alone in your head, whatever. But how often is it 98 that you go back to in some way or another? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm not a huge reminiscer, <laughs> you know, I guess. But just, I mean, it, it was a special time, you, you know. Uh, obviously, the team that we had put together, the, the season that we had, when you think back, which you don't really do it a whole lot, you know, when you're in it. And now that it's been so far, you know, away, until you see a highlight or something like that, you really, I don't really, I don't know about the other fellows, but you, you really don't think back on it 
a whole lot, but a day like this makes you think back on it and makes you realize, <coughs> you know, what a special team it was. And, you know, and I, I've know, I've said this before, you know, the, the team was, I, I think after losing in 97, I know personally for me, um, you know, we were so hungry to do it again because we had a taste of it in 96. And so once you get that taste of it, <laughs> you, you know, you want that. And so I think that really drove us. And, of course, we couldn't have had a better guy leading us than, than this guy right here to my left and just never panicked um, no matter what. And, and – and was as loyal as to you as, as you know to the end of the earth and then to have the group of position players that we had uh, I was a starting pitcher I went out every once every fifth day you know um, but to have the the guys that we had young obviously we were at that time with the veteran guys that we had um, the, the the grind that they showed every single day to take the field and to play the way they did was just awesome to watch that year yeah, and, and, you know, the thing comes to me when, when Brocious came to our ball club, he, he just elevated the mood. You know, he uh, was lighthearted. He made, you know, crack jokes, make fun of himself. And he hit, he hit so many key home runs. You know, that, of course, the one against Hoffman was, was amazing. I mean, you go in their ballpark and you're losing a ball game and Hoffman, who's in the Hall of Fame, and you knew he would be at the time, uh, you know, all of a sudden, it, you know, it's a ball over the center field fence, and it just you just shake your head. But uh, you know, for not getting a lot of uh, attention or notoriety, uh, he he really made a big big difference in our ball club. We're gonna take a few more all the way to the left front row, gentlemen. First and foremost, uh, congratulations for everything you've done in your baseball careers. But if you had to look at it and just turn the clock back and say to yourself, if there's one moment that you could change in your baseball career? And secondly, if there was something that you didn't achieve in your career, what would that have been? I'm gonna answer that question. I wanna start with that. Um, if I would, I won't change anything on my career. You know, because all, all the victories and all the defeats uh, make us, uh, it made me enjoy the game even better, appreciate the game even better, and knowing you know, sometimes you take it for granted. So you think that you, I mean, the expectation, especially here in New York, is so high and you wanted to win, yes, every time. You know, but it takes a special group of people to accomplish that. And while we accomplished all those years, it was amazing. I was sharing with Derek that uh, uh, we just have a, a, a family group. It wasn't just a team. We, are, we were a family. And I will never change nothing not even uh 97 or 2001 because they made me better you know we're talking about 97 i wish we start playing the next day 98 season because i mean it, it was the heart you know but uh, we we take our bidding and uh we came ready in 98 and uh but again i will never change anything we're gonna left larry uh for derek just what is your perspective of what's right. it like for you being at this event for the first time in this capacity and getting introduced at the same point where in the past, like Yankee greats like DiMaggio would get introduced? Well, I'm working on rebranding the name Old Timers Day to something else. Uh, I'm still the youngest one. I'm still the youngest one here. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> no, it, it, it's... Look, it's when you're playing, like I said, you're on the bench and you're watching the game, and you can never see yourself being introduced at old timers because you don't ever think you're going to get old, which we are not old, right? We're not old. <laughs> a little bit but older. 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 Yeah, older. Um, but, man, it's a special feeling. I said it, like I said out there, the fans. What makes this organization great is the respect that they have for the history. And, you know, this is one of, I think now, it used to be the only team that had old timers day, but the reason they have it is because of the fans' appreciation of the history. And when you've had as much success as we were able to have as a group, you know, the fans never forget it, and regardless of where you are. I run into New Yorkers every day, and they'll say thank you for the championships that we won. So it is a special feeling to be here at Yankee Stadium, introduced at the game formerly known as Old Timers Day. Um, but no, it's, it's something I, I wish my family, my 
kids are in school, so they couldn't get up here, but uh, I'm sure they're going to look forward to getting out here one day to experience it with me as well. We're going to take two more, and I apologize. We're not going to get to all the hands. Brianna. <clears throat> being here today and all together does it like hate you that it's been 25 years or does being here in this environment make it feel like it can be like just a few years ago we don't you know we don't get together as a group that often um but when we do it feels like we've been we never left each other you know what i mean because it's it's we played together for man since i was 18 years old we played together all of us played together and so even though we don't see each other, it still feels like we've been together all this time. Anybody else want to? Yeah, when Sorry. you've had success, you know, there'll always be that connection. And, and when you run into each other, whether it's, you know, here or, you know, in, in a, at a different venue, uh, there's, there's always something that will always be special because of the accomplishment uh, that, that you both experienced. And the heartache, too, right? Success and mm -hmm. the heartache that you know, we all walk through together. You know, we we never had, we never had a group that that pointed fingers. You know, we always wore it and, and owned it, and uh, you know whether it was a was a positive or a negative, it was it was something we did together, and that that's that's very proud for me. Max, last one. Derek, I know you said you haven't watched many games this year, but what would your message be to this team as they finish up a? A disappointing campaign with the expectations they have what do they need to do to to get back on track win mm -hmm. i mean it's that simple um they're not eliminated you know so you go out you win one game one game at a time so i think the message i would give probably the same message that they're saying to each other in there i mean you have to take it one day at a time we're here for you know old timers game old timers day in the 98 team the, what made the 98 team great was every single day we wanted to beat you didn't make a difference how many I don't even know how many games we won that division by that year I have no idea but we didn't care it was like we were competing against ourselves so it's literally it's that simple you win a game okay appreciate everyone's time thank enjoy you. the day thank you. thank you, thanks everyone